on spiritism and the spirit world around us. Welcome tonight. I'm very happy to welcome everybody. We are here every Wednesday at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific, all time zones in between around the world. I am making this a uh, regular series on our spiritism and spirit world around this group. Also on Sundays, Sunday evenings at Eastern, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, I I'm Facebook live streaming on Kardec radio. So that you can, if you need to see me two times a week, I am here Sundays and Wednesdays. Also, you can see my, uh, you can see my videos on YouTube or the BitChute channel, whichever one you would like to see. In fact, uh, let me show you where we are now. Go here, share. And let's go see if that is showing. I'm not sure if that's showing or not. Let's just check. So you can see our YouTube channel on that. Oops, wrong one. Chrome tab, there we go. That's right, Chrome tab, there we go. So. Here's our YouTube channel. You also have a Bitchu channel, but for those, uh, it mirrors a lot our Facebook site, Spiritism in the Spirit World Around Us. You can see that I will upload this video, and you can see that, um, oh, please also subscribe. Hit the bell to subscribe so you can be notified when there's new videos. The last video I uploaded was on Sunday night, Reincarnations. This, the other popular video has been a lot of people have been watching is the prophecy by Chico. We are at a start of a new beginning, and I I I have a lot of different videos. I have pretty long videos and short videos. I have the, my playlist, Spiritism Explored and Explained. Are you know a lot of it, usually pretty small, um, uh, short videos. You know, five, fifteen minutes, three minutes, whatever. And when I go through a lot of short topics and then spirit musings, again, they're not very long videos. And then I have, you know, a lot of other things, have it, how to live, heaven and below, et cetera. So I will load this video up. Please tell your friends about Spiritism, Spirit World Around Us and the Facebook page uh, so they can see live streaming. They can see live streaming on um on me and also please use this opportunity to ask me questions the other thing if you would like um and a lot of people have is they've asked they have used the spiritismstudy.org they get they get on there they scroll down and there's a place that you can make an appointment with talking to a spiritist to understand more about spiritism believe me this is a very there's this not like a, a, a on you know completely discipline study group this is we talk we decide what interests you we think about things that can help you help you if you want to right nothing you have to do so it's all at your your schedule your pace and uh we'd be happy to talk to you. i just love talking to people so i really recommend if you want to explore spiritism more and you feel good about reading it fine that is great if you'd like to talk Talk to me just one time or two times. That's all up to you. I've been talking to quite a few people lately, so it's been great. So just one one last reminder, we are here talking about spiritism. And, of course, the, the, the great codifier of spiritism, Alan Kardec. So he started it all with the spirit of truth, organizing the messages given to different mediums in which Alan Kardec asked a series of questions, and he, and he gathered those questions from multiple mediums and only use them as a book if they had through multiple mediums and other spirits they talked to, they had the same answer. So it was very, he, you know, he, he tried to do it in a very scientific, organized manner. Now, let's get to what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about our trials and death. This is in Leon Denis' uh, book, Here and Hereafter. Of course, this book is available on PDF. So that's how I read it. Um, here and hereafter, it's, it's you know, it's very interesting book. If you are uh, want to explore even more and more things about spiritism, he was you know he was kind of the apostle after uh, Alan Kardec. He kept you know writing and talking to people and everything you know right after Alan Kardec died. So he was still very involved. 
So let's talk about what he, this was in chapter 13 on the, on the PDF. And I, you know, I'm going to quote from the PDF. It's on page 71 for the PDF. And he's talking about trial and death. And let me read you what he says about this. Because I just understand what he's saying, but I also think that sometimes some of us uh, hold ourselves to too harsh and high of a standard. So let me talk about it after I finish this quote from uh, Leon Denis in Here and Hereafter. Higher than fortune and higher than happiness do we fix the aim of life. Then behold, all our conceptions are forthwith revolutionized. The universe becomes an arena through which the soul goes for fighting for its elevation which may be obtained, but at the price of much effort, self-sacrifice and suffering. Suffering, be it physical or moral, is one of the essential requisites of evolution, potent instrument of development and progress. It teaches us to know ourselves, to govern our passions, and to love our neighbors. The soul's most necessary acquisitions are love and science. The, one, the more one knows, the more one loves, and the greater is our elevation. Suffering obliges us to inquire into the causes that produced it, so as to oppose and overcome them, and the knowledge of these causes awaken us a quicker sympathy for those who suffer. Pain is a supreme purifier, the instiller of patience, resignation, and austere duty. It is the retort in which selfishness is mel melted and pride dissolved. Sometimes in the darkest hours, the much-tried soul, tired soul, rebels, denying God and his justice. But when the storm is spent and the soul can calmly face its grief, it discovers that suffering has made it better, more pitiful, and more helpful. Now, those are very true words, right? I mean, look, this is what Spiritism tells us, that we're here, we're not here to, you know, this is not a summer camp. This is an educational uh, period of our lives. We are here to reform our character, to uh, rip out, you know, take out the primitive emotions and replace them with higher emotions, right? Get rid of hate and envy and put in charity and fraternity. But I do want to caution people, and I was just talking to a good friend of mine, and, you know, we were talking about how sometimes we think ourselves like we're not doing enough, right? And we beat ourselves up. And we go, oh, no, we'll never get there. We'll never get to be high spirit. And I think it's important to know that, look, if you're a, if you're a professional, and you know how far you can you can push yourself before you need rest. In the spirit world, these these spirits, I mean, maybe they're not completely they're not perfect spirits, but as they go up and up in higher and higher levels, and then they come down, they come down to us to help us and to serve, right? To to guide us on our path. In the books by G. Val Owen, and I talk about this in my book, um, Spirits in the spirit universe. This is the first of the books is heaven and below. The second book is spirits in the spirit universe. The third book is how spirits help us. But, and I talk about this is how that they even have in the spirit world, they have like these rest areas where they have a blend of water and music and atmosphere. Um, so when people come out of the earth and they've given, you know, they've, they've worked hard on these, you know, it may be the umbrella, it may be on earth itself, it may be in the dark abyss. Even they have to rest and relax and revitalize, right? So this is the important thing I want people to understand is that if you are, are this completely absorbed in becoming a high spirit, you can get yourself to the point of exhaustion. And what will happen is since, you know, the, the, the lower spirits around us really don't want any of us to go on the right roads, you know, less, less people for them to manipulate. They will use that, that, you know, kind of anguish or maybe disappointment in ourselves and they'll try to amplify it and, and say, no, you should just give up. So you can't let, you can't give into that. And the way not to give into that, of course, is always listen to your conscious and filter out those negative thoughts. But you have to sometimes rest and relax, right? Yes, we know that sometimes we have to go through painful trials. And by those painful trials, we learn a lot. We also know that we have to 
give ourselves more. We have to do more for other people. But as responsible adults, as responsible souls and spirits, we also have to know when we're at the point where doing more will actually make, make us backwards, right? It's like, it's like, you know, if you're, if you just spend all your time in helping people and then it just, it just gripes you, then it's time, well, I think it's time to stop. There's this wonderful story, and I'll summarize it very quickly here, by, by a spirit. And he had gone through life after life. He'd been very successful. His last life, he was rich. And his mission was to help a lot of people with the capital he acquired. And unlike me, he actually did help people with the power and cap and wealth that he had. And he had lots of credit. And he came back to the spirit world and he says, you know, I want to be a saint. I really want to just help people now. I, you know, I just, I just need to do that, you know, full time. I, I, I'm ready. And I go, well, are you sure? Not, and he goes, yes, yes, I'm ready. He goes, well, let us check if you have enough credit for that, right? If, if we think it will help. And he goes, well, you have enough credit for it, but are you sure? It's a, you know, it's a big job. And it's, you know, it's, it's, there's, you know, this is not easy. He goes, no, no, that's, that's what I want to do. So he went to earth. He was uh, reincarnated, great parents. He, uh, this is back, you know, he was part of the church. He, he was very pious. He was a great teenager. Which, um, and then, you know, even in his teenage, later teenage years, he started healing people. He was a curative medium, uh, medium. And then he got known in his city, right? More people came to him and he was helping people. And in his 20s, um, he started getting known more, right? That, that will happen, of course. And people from other cities started coming around to him and he was helping people. And then he just like, he had no time to himself. He could not even take that. People would be knocking on his door. He'd wake up and there'd be a line around the block, right? I think the same thing happened to, to Chico. There'd just be, you know, people needed him. Right. And and we all know how people are when they need you. They don't think of you. They think of themselves and their need first, which is, you know, that's our human nature right now. And he just couldn't stand anymore. It's like he has no he had no time to withdraw to himself. I know like you know, a lot of people, I'm, I'm the same way. I can be with people. But then I get to the point where, no, I just need to settle down. Right. Kind of be by myself for a while recharge my own batteries. Now, some people are extroverts. I, I'm not, which I'm sure you're surprised at. Um, and they get charged by being with people, you know, other people don't, right? So he says, no, I just can't stand anymore. So he prayed and he meditated and his guardian uh, angel came and said, well, he goes, well, this is, you know, you picked this mission, right? This is, this, you know, this was your decision. He goes, I know, I, I just can't stand it. He goes, well, are you sure? I mean, I can, you know, we can stop the mission today, right? And of course, when they say stop the mission today, that means, you know, you physically die and you go, you go back home, which, you know, for, you know, him, it's a great place. He goes, no, I, I you know, I'm done. I, I just can't stand anymore. So he goes, okay, I'll take you home. So, you know, he, you know, he died of whatever causes that night and he came back to the spirit world. And he went and he talked to Jesus and he says, Jesus, I just couldn't stand it. There was people bothering me all the time. I had no time to myself. They just tried to use me. I, you know, it was just, you know, it was just, it was more than I could stand. And what was Jesus' response? He just laughed. He, you know, he's like, and, the, the, and of course the spirit who wrote the book, you know, laughed at himself too. He goes, you know, I wasn't ready, right? I wasn't ready for that. And, you, you know, you just have to laugh at yourself sometimes and know that sometimes when you think you're ready, you know, it's like the, it's like the, you know, the young child thinking that they can, you know, ride a bike before they can, or they can make their own dinner without destroying the kitchen, you know, we're the same way. So what I want to say, everyone is, yes, Leon Denis is correct, right? We need to strive and self-sacrifice and understand that suffering is part of our learning but we don't need to make it so it's so much that it destroys our incentive right and sometimes we need to recharge our battery and 
get back to the point when we're ready for the battle again, right? Because you can only fight for so long and then, then you have to rest. And I'm not the person to tell you when you need to rest. No one else is. You yourself know how much you need to recover and restore your energies. And then when your energies are, and how to do that, and when your energies are restored, then you get back in the battle, right? You get back in there and say, okay, I'm ready. I can go help other people. I can do, go do this. I can stop that habit, right? Or I can, you know, those type of things. So that's why it's important not to um, be too hard on ourselves. I'm not saying don't be realistic, right? Because we all know how people have this ability to be self-delusional. Um, and we've all gone through that thing. Oh, yeah, I'm doing great, right? And not so. So it's good to be analytical, but don't be, don't tear yourself down. Be analytical, right? It says, Joanna DeAngelis says, analyze your problem. Don't dwell on it. Don't beat yourself up on it, right? And then don't go look for trials that you're going to be painful on it because you think you're punishing yourself. All that does is actually reinforces your bad behavior. Analyze it, fix it, move forward. She always has great advice. I mean, I can't say enough about Joanna DeAngelis. So, then Leon Denis says, all the vicissitudes of life contribute to our improvement through, through suffering, humiliation, infirmity, and adversity. Does the good slowly free itself from evil? Thus does it come to pass that suffering predominates over happiness. Hardships tempers the character, quickens sentiment, and subdues the proud and hasty spirit. Physical suffering also has its object. It chemically loosens the bond that unites the spirit to the flesh. It liberates the spirit from the coarse fluids, which even after death encompasses it, holding it down to the lower regions. Let us not rail against suffering, for it alone may rescue us from indifference and voluptuousness. It molds the spirit, imparting to it the purest outlines, the most gracious beauty. And it's true, right? When I had um, my... Uh, kidney stones and I was in the emergency ward and you know I couldn't pass any fluids and I was in there for quite a while I thought well this you know this could be it and it really does <laughs> make you think and sometimes you know this close brush with death this episode some people will have you know some major you know uh, you know like a cancer or something like that some heart attack that they live through this major episode will actually supply kind of what you need sometimes to evaluate what's important, what the priorities are in your life, you know, evaluate where you are, where you should be. And it does help. So, I mean, that, that we, you know, we need to understand. And I talk about, you know, the, how to ascend and, you know, what we need to do to modify our character and modify that which we do and I, and I talk a lot about that in the book uh, how to live inner peace through spiritism and again you can look at that you can find that on my website nwspiritism.com you go to the right hand side you'll see that book also on nwspiritism.com you'll see links to my youtube channel and bitsu channel all my other books actually and of course a lot of articles on on that website so if you want to know more about spiritism and you, you know, you'd like to read about it, uh, please go to nwspiritism.com. Let me put this on here again, so I'll remind you that you can certainly go to uh, spiritismstudy.org to make an appointment. So, so yes, and I'm sure you've seen uh, instances of people after they've had near uh, a near death with a medical you know, come out and they, you know, they go, oh, I know what's important. I know what's not important. You see the same thing with people with near death experiences. They'll go through and they go, and they, you know, they may have had a heart attack too. They may have a combination. They have a heart attack or, or something really, you know, a, a car accident and they're, they, they're taken to the spirit world and they're, they're put back and they say, okay, right. I know it's important. I'm going to, I'm going to turn my life around. I'm going to think about myself and improve myself. I'm going to think about others and help them improve. And that's really why we're on earth. 
And Leon Denis is telling us, yeah, and part of the process of improvement is our trials, right? Our, and he, then he goes on to say, our trials are the infallible corrective of our inexperience. Provident acts towards us like a vigilant mother towards an unruly child. And I think that's a really good, uh, ex, you know, uh, kind of descriptive sentence, right? Like a vigilant mother towards an unruly child. When you have an unruly child, you're going to see, you're going to find, you're going to really analyze that child and think, okay, how can I mold that child to be a better child, someone who will be successful as they grow up without destroying their, you know, destroying their character or, you know, hurting them too much, but giving them um, some life lessons, right? And that's, then he goes on to say, when we remain deaf to its appeals and stubborn to its admission, it leads us to encounter disappointment and failure, well knowing that adversity is the best teacher of wisdom. And boy, is that true. And also, do we resist it with everything? I can remember, and I've said you know these things before, being at work and having some really adverse, you know, other colleagues and and think, oh, why do I have to put up with this? They ask me questions. I don't know the answer. Well, you know what? When I finally analyze, it's like, no, get your act together, Brian. Know the answers. Be as as complete as possible. Stop being lazy because, look, when we're high spirit, we have to be as perfect as possible. We have to really analyze everything and know what we're talking about. There are instances in some of the, in, you know, that I talk about in my books, Heaven and Below, Spirits in the Spirit Universe, and How Spirits Guide Us. Well, these people come back from missions, and they'll come back from missions, and the high spirit says, oh, you've done a great job. And, but they always say, but not perfectly but you've done a good job and you're, and you know, you, you've, you've helped yourself a lot. And they'll, they'll say you didn't do it perfectly because they want you to understand that that is really, if you want to be a perfect spirit, you'll do things perfectly, which is a very high bar, but it's a high bar you can make if you just keep working at it for, you know, many, many, many lives and millennia. And it's something that should be done because when you're a perfect spirit, you have this un, you know, unknowable, immense power to change solar systems, to move the sun, to create earth, to create moons, right? To create humanity, to, to rise up civilizations and break them down. That's, you know, you, you, would you want someone who is not as perfect as Jesus Christ leading this planet? No, no, you don't. So we have to remind that there's a high bar. But again, as I said at the beginning of this talk, don't say, oh, I'll never be perfect. Because, you know, I, I'll say this anything. I, you know, right now, I will tell you the, you know, I'll tell you that I can't, I cannot see myself being perfect because I know that I don't know what perfection is. I don't, I don't know what you have to go through to be absolutely perfect. But, I know someday I am sure that I'll get there, but right now I know that I don't know what that means. So, right, I'm going to compartmentalize that and say, okay, I'm going to put that off. It's an unanswerable question. I'm not, it's like me trying to understand quantum physics, right? I'm not going to understand quantum physics in this life. So, I'm not going to, you know, I might read about it and summarize and try to understand a little bit, right? Try to understand how to. How to approach perfection, but I'm not going to understand perfection, and and I don't think I don't think hardly anybody listening to me on this YouTube channel, BitChute channel, should either. Um, hope so. I hope there are some exceptions to that, but but this is just part. Of, that's why I'm saying we can't kill ourselves to you know to change ourselves. We need to sometimes we need to sit back and help us or, you know, help ourselves and, re and relax. And then also sometimes we need to compartmentalize things that are beyond us and worry about those later, right? It's all about heuristics, right? Heuristics means you so you take the problem and you, you bring it down and you solve it bit by bit, piece by piece. 
And that's what we have to do too in this life. So, so then he then he says, when we remain when we remain deaf to its appeals and stubborn to it. Oh, I said that before. Okay. I don't want to repeat that, but that was a very good sentence. Such so this is how I want to go. Such is the face fate of most of us here below, under a sky that often lowers. Still must we follow the arid path, our feet lacerated by its stones and thorns. A black robed spirit, the spirit of grief, grief is our guide. Grief, blessed and holy, since it alone can move our inner consciousness, detaching it from the petty vanities to which it obstinately clings, teaching it to instead to worship the noble and the divine. And sometimes we do need that, right? Sometimes we need to get that, you know, that... Uh, figurative whack on the head say no you're not as important as as you think and I, I think that the spirit world is very careful as an example i think the spirit world because i you know if i hear any compliments and you know i always get uncomfortable with compliments but then i i also in my mind like oh oh yeah you know maybe i'm not that bad and i you know i start thinking how good i can be you know how i you know i'm pretty good and it's and it's bad because i i haven't controlled that yet that vanity and that selfishness and that pride. And that's why I think the spirit world is very careful when they talk to me. And that when, you know, when the first, as I said before, the first communication was you failed many, many times. Right. And then, um, you know, so in our, in my previous lives, I, you know, was a failure. And then I found out, you know, last week that I actually, you know, tortured people. And so, you know, so, and of course, the mediums that's telling me this is getting it information about my past lives from spirits that are telling this. So he's telling he's telling me he he didn't say no. You were this really nice person in this last life, and boy, you were close to being perfect. No, no, there was none of that. It was you were pretty. You were even worse than you thought. And I think that I and so I think this is what Le Leon Denis is saying is that. Sometimes we, it's it's actually good, right? It's it's actually blessed and holy for, to kind of tear us down a little bit, so then we can we can understand that we need to be humble in or and then and then take orders right from the spirit world, be humble and really listen to what they say and study more, so we can remake ourselves as we should. It's like a soldier going to basic training. And they're given all these orders and they're and they're running ragged and at first they're taught physically they can do more than they believe but they're also taught you follow orders exactly they they tear you down and then they build you back up so you can actually follow orders without question now the spirit world doesn't want us to follow orders without question but they do want us to really examine ourselves and boy do we all know how hard it is to self-examine ourselves and in the, in the really isolate and inspect all the blemishes that we have right so then leon denis goes on, goes on and he's talking now about death he goes in the light of these revelations death loses its terrifying aspect it now appears nothing more than a necessary transformation a renewal in reality nothing dies death is but in appearance the outer shape alone is affected. The principle of life, the soul, encased with it, within its permanent unity, remains indestructible. It finds itself beyond the grave in its fluidic body in full possessions of its faculties and such attainments, aspirations, virtues, and powers as it had acquired during its earthly life. For, though, for these are the imperishable goods to which the scriptures refer, which... Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. The only, they are the only treasures we gather to carry away with us for our future satisfaction. Now, this is very important to understand. And spiritism comes to the heart of this. And what I think is, is, in, is what spiritism tells you, I think, that they tell you more than other religions and doctrines is is and that's why i've written my books and i've tried to explain what the spirit world is about because spiritism tells you this is this is the process we live in right this is the 
the world we live in. This is why you're here. This is what this is expected of you. If you want, you have, and they always say you have free will. You can park here as long as you want, right? But you're, you are this immortal spirit. And I tell you, from my point of view, I'm not afraid of death I, you know, at all. You know, I will go when I have been told to go. Uh, and actually, I've, I've been told how I will die, which is really great. I'll just, I'll just wake up dead one, one, one night. So I can't ask for anything, you know, one morning. I can't ask for anything better than that. But that doesn't, you know, right now it's like, oh, I, I can't wait, you know. I, I don't want to say I can't wait. It just says, you know, it will happen when it happens. But when I get there, you know, you know, how does it really look? Am I interpreting? Have I interpreted what I think is right? Because, you know, I, I always have these self doubts. Or you, you know, everyone should. Am I 100% sure about anything? Probably not. But you are who you are. I mean, that used to be one of my great fears when I was younger is that, okay, what happens if I get shot in the head? And I'm just a, this, you know, del, you know, you know, not in, not myself, right? Well, it doesn't make, that's just your physical self. Your spirit is always yourself and you will be okay. So I will be who I am. When I, when I get rid of this physical body and actually I'll look better and I'll feel better. I won't have the physical infirmities and I will look how I think I should look right in the spirit world. If you die young, you start looking older. And if you die old, you start looking younger. So you've got these people are usually within their twenties to forties or whatever, how it's how they want to look. It's how they think of themselves. I'm sure there's exceptions in there, but it's how they think of themselves is how they will look. And so that's why, I mean, this is, again, where the Bible tells us so many little hints. Now, I know Spiritism tells us that, that you know, during, you know, when this Christianity became the state religion for Rome, they took out a lot of the, uh, any quotes as far as about reincarnation. But there's still a lot of things in there. That, and one of those things is do not store up, up for yourself treasures on earth, right? And they're telling you, you look, you, that you're not going to take anything with you. You're going to go. You're going to go to the spirit world. The same thing with Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Spiritism explains that perfectly, right? You've got spirits around you. They help, you know, if you've lived a good life, they'll help you out of your body and into some, you know, little spirit hospital for a while, let you rest and recover if that's needed. That's exactly what he meant by let the dead bury the dead. There is a whole world out there. And believe me, it. It was revelatory to me, you know, uh, that we, you know, that we are really in this logical universe where we, we think everything is physical. We think we know everything. We, we, you know, we think that evolution, nature, you know, just randomly did this stuff. But really, nature really is is God in the spirit world, has rules, has programming rules. We don't understand them all yet. We will someday, uh, more and more, maybe not all, but it will come. But right now we don't. And that's why I think that, you know, one, one of us, we have to, do, one of the things we have to do is not let our popular culture say, just because you're religious doesn't, you know, you know, they think if you're religious that, uh, you're, you're missing something, you, you know, you can't grasp the true reality. Well, no, it's actually, if you really analyze why you're here and you look at the uh, you look at the little clues that you've had in your personal life, because this, if you meditate, you'll be given these things. You'll be given like, you know, like your aunt had this vision that came true or your uncle had an NDE and told you things that you can't. And there's no way you knew that. Right. You look at these things and you ask questions and you start to understand that, yes, there is a, a spirit world there. So let me carry on with Leon Denis, who has a lot of good things to say. So then he says, death and the reincarnation, which follows after a certain inter interval, are the two essential forms of progress. By interrupting the narrow habits that we have contacted, they bring us into a different environment. They impart another hue to our thoughts. They force us to adapt our minds to the thousand phases which belong to this new social and universal order of things. When the evening of life is at hand, when our life is about to be turned like the page of a book to make room for a fresh page, then does the wise man review his past and take stock of his deeds. Happy 
then the man who can say, my days have been well fulfilled. Happy is he who has received his trials with resignation and endured them with courage. What though they rent his spirit asunder? Was it not that the bitterness and the gall thereof might find an outlet? The sage, as he muses over the trials of an ardu arduous life, will bless the sufferings he has endured. With a tranquil spirit, he will quietly await the signal for his departure. Let us then bid goodbye to the theories that picture death as an outlet into oblivion or as the prelude to endless torment. Farewell, then, you haggard phantoms of theology, you relentless creeds, pitiless condemnations, and excruciating torments. Farewell. Make way for hope and for life eternal. Behold, from out of the tomb there rises not a dark mist, but a shining light. And that is so true, right? Look. Yes, there is a lower zone and there is a, a dark abyss where if you are a criminal or you are completely materialistic and you have no wish to ever leave the earth or your possessions, you will be in a place that's not that pleasant. But you will be in a place where there's other people like you. It's called the law of affinity. And you will be like gathers with like. And when you want to get out of that, then you can look upward and see and you will be given chances to ask for and, and uh, meditate and look for higher spirits and see examples of other people who've risen out of that. You too can leave, but you have to change your attitude. You have to w be willing to, to get rid of your feelings of revenge and jealousy and hatred for others. And when you do that, even if in your spirit world, when you start doing that, you will start ascending into the nicer levels, into the levels of heaven. And the levels of heaven, I mean, I have never read one thing where it says, oh, I, I don't know if I really want to be here or not. Well, well, actually, I have. I read some people where they go to the first level of heaven and they actually want to go a little bit lower because they, they still want to have food. They want to eat what they think is food, right, and things like that. But they're not quite ready to go all the way. And that's fine. That's your, you know, that's your prerogative. But... Uh, you know, almost the vast majority says this is a wonderful place. You're full of love, light, and uh, you learn so many things. Intellectually, you will be extremely st stimulated, and you'll be with loved ones and people who are positive towards you. It's like, it's like you know, for the lucky one, few of us who've had like these jobs. I've had a job once. I was, uh, you know, for. Um, that I really love. I couldn't wait to go to work. I love the people I work for. I thought my bosses were um, smarter than I was. Like I've been in jobs where I thought I was smarter than everybody else. And believe me, I don't like those jobs because I want to learn. I try to get out of that fast. And um, but it's like that where you you know you want to be there and you want to do what you're doing. That's that's heaven. So then he goes on to say. Have you ever watched the winged butterfly as it sheds the shapeless chrysalis into which a repulsive caterpillar had crept? Have you marveled at the insect which begin by crawling over the ground and now flits so freely and gladly away from the warm sunshine, fragrant with the sweetness of roses? The phenomena of death has no truer symbol than this, for man is also a Chrysalis, which death decomposes, the human body, a garment of flesh, goes back into nature's laboratory. But the spirit, having accomplished its work, wings aloft to the higher life, to that spiritual life which follows the corporeal as day follows night, and which separates our incarnations one from another. Assured of these truths, we shall no longer fear death, but steadfastly look at it in the face. Even as did the Druids, no more will there be fear, nor tears, nor mournful preparations, nor mourning chants. Our funerals will be celebrated by a feast at which we shall render thanks for the release of a soul from bondage and its happy return to its true fatherland. And that's why I was like, you know, my family, my mother's side was Irish. And you, you go to an Irish funeral, you don't hear people crying. You know, it's, it's a party, like you're going to someplace better. And that's really how we should see it. When people die, it's like, oh, lucky them, right? The, and and we're also told in the books uh, by Andre Luis and other books is that when someone dies, you should say, oh, I wish they were back here, right? Because 
really, if you're, if you just like miss them so much, and there's nothing bad about missing them, but if you just like, you have this longing to want them back with you, you're actually holding them back from them ascending into heaven. And what you really need to do is say, well, I miss you on earth and I love you, but I wish you all the luck and all the courage and help you need to rise in heaven and learn what you need to learn. And I'll be there with you someday, right? You need to keep a positive, uh, outlook and, and you know, i've read uh and seen things where you know someone's in, like in a coma or or someone's in this really bad shape and they're just like hanging on to life and it's really it's the family around them wishing them not to die right it's making them hang on and keeping them in this not good situation whereas you just say look be where you need to be the spirit world knows your trial knows you should be in a coma or whatever I, you know, please follow what your trial is. If you need to be here, I, I love that. I'll be with you. If not, be free. It's what, you know, you need to say those things. You don't, you try not to, you know, through your thoughts, because your thoughts, even here in our physical world, has action. So try not to hold someone from that glory of leaving that body and going into the great illumination, right? So what he's saying is death is the great revealer. In the hours of trial, when all that surrounds us seems immersed in darkness, do we not sometimes wonder, wherefore was I born? Why was I not allowed to remain without in the dark and quiet night where one feels not and suffers not, but, oh, but where one merely sleeps the eternal sleep? And in, in these anguished moments, a far off voice is lifted and reaching us replies, Suffer that thou mayest grow and be purified. Learn that thy destiny is a great one. This cold earth is not to be thy grave. Those worlds that shine in the remotest heavens are thy future abodes. They are God's heritage to thee. Thou art for all time a citizen of the universe. Thou belongest to the time to come as well as to the time that goes by. And now in this immediate present, thou preparest thy elevation. Therefore, patiently endure these tribulations, which thou thyself hast chosen. So in the furrows of pain, and with thy tears water the seeds that will mature in thy lives to come. So for others as well as for yourself, as others have sown for thee. Go forth, immortal spirit, climb with a sure footing that steep path which leads to the height whence the unobscured future may be contemplated. The slope is steep, and often shall thine eyes be blinded by thy sweat. But from the top thou shalt behold the great light, the great white light of justice and variety. Variety. Verity, I'm sorry, verity, truth. I said that wrong. That's, I think it's, so, this is what's awaiting us, right? What's awaiting us is this wonderful thing. And what this, this wonderfulness is, is life in the spirit world, life with others like us. And what Leon Denis is so eloquently saying is that, yes, our trials are hard here on earth. And it's, but I would say you need to put them in perspective and not over dramatize them. The trials are like when we go to college and then that first year, first two years of college, sometimes it's very difficult because we're not into the process We've been lazy in high school. Now we're really learning how to learn and then just soak up this information so rapidly. It may be different for other people, but but that's really, and this is what we're doing here on earth. We're really learning. We are learning how to, how to remodel our character. And the faster you learn how to remodel your character, then even those trials that are, are really hard don't become so hard. They don't become so dramatic. They don't become so depressing. That's what, this is where I, I, I go back with my book, How to Live, because the more you understand that we are here for a purpose and that we are here to learn, to love, right? To get, you know, God in our heart and to change and mold our character to be, to be, loving people that want to serve want to help other people that you will then look at your trials and go oh okay this is what i'm supposed to learn instead of oh, i can't believe that happened to me 
oh, I can't believe, you know, I had a terrible marriage or my girlfriend or boyfriend just dumped me. Well, fine. They dumped you for a reason. Maybe you dumped them in an earlier life and learned that if they the breakup was painful and they were not nice and they were not fair and maybe they took a little bit of money from you, like just tell yourself, don't tell, don't say I'm going to get revenge. You got to learn not to do that. Say, okay, I'm never going to do that to anybody else because I didn't like it. Why would I do that to somebody else? Don't use that as an excuse then to be as bad as that other person was. What you need to do is say, is learn from it and say, oh, I'll never do that. Because at the root of everything, that person who treated you badly or did something, the spirit world will in turn give them, because of karma, right? Give them the lesson they so sorely need. Therefore, when you really learn to forgive, you have patience. These are all steps in how to live, right? You will then, you, you just like, life becomes so much more harmonious, right? It, it, your, your stress level goes down. I, I tell you, when I got into spiritism, you know, it's my, you know, my blood pressure is really average and excellent. Um, I don't have headaches. I yeah, occasionally I'll have a headache, but hardly any time anymore. I, my, my life is so less stressful because I don't let the little things bother me, you know? Trying to, the, you know, trying to go through the bureaucrats of getting a passport or something like that when you're up against people that, you know, just love to put obstacles in your way. I just, okay, you know, hey, I, I know <laughs> I've been told I've been in charge of people and I probably made their life. as So I just grin and bear it. I go, okay, yep. Well, uh, next time I'll try to make it as least bureaucratic as possible if I'm in charge of anything. So those are just, you know, you just have to. Sometimes, as Leon Denise said, you got to get to that 50,000 foot level, look down on your life, and, and the road doesn't look so rocky. But if you want it to look rocky, it, it will. So um, I hope everyone's enjoyed this. Again, I would like everyone to uh, go to my website, nwspiritism.com. Check out the books I have. Uh, know that I'm going to put this video on my YouTube and BitChute channels. So please go and subscribe to that. Oh, also on my book, Seven Tenets of Spiritism, it is now out in audio. So I do have an audio book. There is a link to that book in my site, nws, nwspiritism.com. The Seven Tenets of, of Spiritism, it's six ninety five dollars on audio. It's my first audio book. I narrated it. Um, and then people are always saying they, they enjoy it, which was very good to hear. So please, you can click on that link. I have a link on the right-hand side, the NW Spiritism, and you have it in Kindle, in paperback, and audio. Okay, so I want to say everyone good night. God bless everyone, and good night.